Last week on Discord, Caboose presented this station design in screenshots. And it immediately sparked a lot of discussion. Now let me start some trains going through here. So this this is quite interesting in how it how it operates because if you look at this signaling, this is actually a bi-directional station. It's still only one line in, one line out. But as the trains go through here, they do this kind of quite nice, quite attractive interleaving. And see they're sort of interleaving themselves like that. And this this is nice, but this immediately sparked discussion of could this possibly be working as a station? A lot of the discussion centred around these these tunnels on the entrance and exit. And so said, well, if you look at this, this train has to go uphill as it's doing this join. Surely that's going to cause throughput problem. There was something else which which I thought. And immediately I said, well, I'm not going to say this because I want to test this first. I don't want to just say something out of nowhere because it'll probably turn out to be wrong. I thought the challenge would be this merge. Because we know from our experiments with this station design that this can nearly saturate a single line track. So it's about as close as you can get to saturating without sort of doing clever clocks or things like the uh, rule breaker station where where trains are, you know are released on the particular schedule. So I was actually thinking, well, surely this would do the problem. We can actually see there's a lot of trains queuing up there. So, well, let, let's test this. Let's see what actually happens. So I'm going to let this run a few months and uh, see what the result. And here we are with those results. And on the compact, semi-balanced Rovo, no surprises. We know it's a station that reliably throughputs 1,800 tonnes of cargo, and, you know, it's close to saturating these tracks. The surprise comes with this big station, which, despite all of these clogs, all of these slow-moving trains, with all of these complicated tunnels, is doing massively better, sort of about a 15% improvement for building this. So, the question is, how? We always say that the, this, we feel, is kind of close to saturating a single track, but how true, true is that? Well, if we have a look at the headway between trains here, so I'm going to just pop that close, we see that that, that is 12 tiles. If we go here, the headway between trains here is incredibly close. These ones are only four tiles apart, and that's not quite followed for all of them. So this this has a longer headway. But you see again this trade starting here. This sort of situation here is actually producing quite small headways. So, so that was slightly anomaly, but this again, this is still a sort of eight tiles or so. Which compared to here, where we're you know, again, let's let's just show this sort of twelve, thirteen tiles, that's where a lot of that throughput is coming from. So the fact that the trains are that much closer stacked on here. Here's another one which has managed that sort of four tile gap. So how does that happen? Well, let's go further into this. So one thing that I noticed quite early on looking at this station is that Caboose has done some very, very exact signalling in making sure that this station doesn't have any uneven signal gaps. And there is actually an uneven signal gap situation in the the semi balance robot, or rather, there is a signal gap which is longer than it should be. And that was the first thing that I thought, let's change this. So let's try this. Rather than these trains kind of waiting here to go, and these trains on the diagonal tracks, let's let them get a bit closer to the junction. So let us see what that does. It's actually given us a useful little boost. We've actually improved the design of this station just by moving these signals about. It's still not up there with this 2100, but that way we kind of, you know, four or five percent improvements not to be complained about. And this comes, let's have a look at the headway between chains. So we were running with the headway of, I think you did 12 to 14 tiles with, Kind of, we've not made a huge improvement, but 
can kind of see those a little bit closer. And that's kind of what we'd expect. Trains are allowed to run a little bit closer. And so therefore, no, we're getting slightly more of them through through the station. This made me question what else is going on here. Now I think there's something interesting in these tunnels. So these were in theory slowing the trains down. And I wondered about that. Is this actually a slowdown? What happens if a train has to go through one of these dips on the entrance to this station? So let's do a little bit of rebuilding. So I'm going to just, I'm going to just shut the trains off here. And so then no more of them are coming in. And there we go. That's that. But so you're just going to do a little bit of rebuilding. Now, I'm not going to build tunnels. What I am going to do is I'm going to build some changes to the elevation. And my theory is that having the train go down that little that little sort of run there does something to the signaling, particularly this one, where it's it's splitting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little one of these little trenches after the split. Then I'm going to do the same out here after the merge. You build up like that. And then this this is going to have to be extended a bit around here. Make this sort of a you know, little bit longer. So I'm going to come down there like that. Signal that up there. And sort of the similar thing here, so it's so gonna have to kind of go around there a bit. Have some nice long turns. And just signal that across there. And there we go. So that that's that. And I I will just go do that with the other station. And here is the other station with that done to it. And this has been running for a little while. So let's go have a look at what that did, the results. Well something quite interesting indeed in terms of the throughput. And what's noticeable here is this hasn't actually been with that much better headways. They're still at about sort of 12 tiles, so they, we could improve this further. But this is actually now starting to approach the quality of the Munster station, thanks to these tracks. And I'll just give you a, a sample of the reactions that I had to this station design. Yes. This is what I go to term the thanks I hate it station. A very high throughput, very high performing, roll on roll off station. And why does this work? Well, when we've looked at stations before and about acceleration tracks and things like that, one of the things that we found is that a critical part of station design is how quickly you can get trains out of this congested area. And if we watch this train go down here, You'll see that as it goes down here, it accelerates. And if you go, okay, fine, but it goes back uphill. So any acceleration bonus it gets from that is not going to be immediately sort of removed by the hill. But the key is, when this enters this section, it's going downhill. It still has wagons at the back pushing it downhill, even if it's going up that hill. So in fact, this is a boost to acceleration or neutral, up till the point when the train has already passed the signal. But at that point it doesn't matter, because of course this train can already start moving. This train can already get into that section. So this just helps dispatch trains out of this kind of critical section that little bit faster. And that's why even with this sort of longer signal gap, even though this, in theory, breaks lots of rules, we knew when we did the curve stations that this kind of trough design if you do the whole station, doesn't work, but this does, at least for these low-powered trains, and I should point out that if you upgrade to SH40s, this doesn't make much difference. So, with that in mind, what happens if we make an extreme version of the Thanks I Hate It station? Here is an extreme version of the Thanks I Hate It station, which I call the Mega Curves. What happens with this station is that trains, when they're fully loaded, go down this very steep hill, picking up lots of acceleration into this track. 
and then they go round. They have a normal things I hate it station here. And then as they come back unloaded, and they can cope with going uphill, and see only a very slight drop in speed going up here. And we have double tracked this just to make sure we get to the minimal possible slowdown. And they come up to here again, where they can then go and release that energy. So it's not so much a curved station, it's an entire curved track. Very much like traditional railways where you'd build the sort of you'd have boats at the bottom of the hill and your coal mine or slate mine or whatever else at the top, and you'd roll the weapons loaded down, and then a horse would drag them up empty. Let's have a look at how this performs. So we see the things I hate it doing its normal sort of two thousand or so thing. This one seems slightly less good because I had to cram the other station in, and so there's a bit of an awkward curly bridge section. And this, yes, you see, sort of a huge boost from doing this. It's from two thousand one hundred. So this, if you really want to go at it and you want to make a little excuse of some realism, uh, having your load station at the top of the hill. And then your unload station at the bottom hops a lot. With these relatively low power trains, that is a point I made. So what I am now going to do is change these for SH40s, a high power train. I've now upgraded to SH40s, let things run a little bit, and I'll show you the scores. There's pretty much nothing in it. The mega curse lags slightly behind, but that could just be monthly fluctuation. So, and in fact, while I haven't got one here, this is about 2,500 tonnes. This is exactly what you'd see with a flat, compact, semi-balanced Roro with SH40s as well. So once you have, let's have a look. Yes, 5,000 horsepower. Once you have 5,000 horsepower, the hills really don't matter. They don't help. They don't hinder. So this station, the Thanks I Hate It station, is a useful boost. But a useful boost early game when you have weaker trains. One last question remains, which whenever I do these elevation-based tricks, we will sooner or later ask me, well, what about JTR's patch pack and realistic braking? So I should finish up by having a look at what happens in JTR for these stations. In JTR, we see sort of similar results, really, for the flat station. It's kind of rooting you know, 1,900 tonnes or so, which I think is what we saw with the recycled version. And the Munster sawmill, which, uh, yes, has lost some of its advantage. It's still slightly better, but uh, it's lost a little bit of that advantage. And now let's have a look at the, the, the Thanks I Hate It station and the Mega Curse. And here I have some excellent news, which is that... Both the Thanks I Hate It and the Baker Curse Station are worse than just a simple flat station. So if you're using JDR Patch Pack and you're using the realistic braking, you can say what everybody wants to say when they see this station, which is it is an abomination and I am not using it. And you would actually be justified in terms of throughput. And this is really just because the the braking, like boosting the trains here just, just means they have to reserve longer for their braking slots. Although there's an interesting question here. It's just the one last thing I want to do on this video. The, the kind of thing that I usually do on a science video that then breaks the entire world, but you know, such is life. Let's, let's just get rid of these, these silly little entry tracks. So, so I'm going to keep the mega curves, but just purely as a mega curves, because we knew that curve stations were actually quite effective in, in JTR, for the realistic braking. Right, is a in realistic design was actually quite effective. Ignore my awful signal gaps there. And my awful track building. Let's down to two. Let's signal that probably. And then I need to go do the same at the other end. So I got a moving train. Hey, JTR will let me do that. This is always slightly frustrating to build with these because the because the trains reserved so far ahead that the realistic signal breaking realistic braking patch. And JDR tells you, no, you can't do it. Yes, there we go. Can't build that. That's a moving train approaching. Um, but actually, that whole realistic braking, because the trains reserve multiple blocks, makes the having the signals at even block density is less less important. So, so let's let that bed down a little bit and ignore the new road vehicles. We're testing trains here. Let's uh, do another reset. 
Let's see if the Mega Curse is improving. Uh, so, so interestingly, no. The Mega Curse is still worse. And I think this is happening. Because the because here, rather than helping with helping the trains accelerate away further, 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 faster, this is causing trains to go, well, if I'm coming down this hill and I need to stop because the train in front stops, I need to reserve an awful long track. So it's, it's actually slowing down the release. So we'd be better with a little quick release like this. So yes, so in JGR, you don't need to build mega curves. And although, although simple curves helps, mega curves doesn't. And you don't need to build the horrible cursed thanks I hate it station. So that I hope was an interesting journey through some station design. And I'm really glad that Camus shared this station, because it actually sparks a lot of interesting discussion. And while it also sparked a horrible cursed station design, you can't have everything. Yeah, so and as ever, you know, if there's there's things you would like me to test or investigate, please do leave a comment. I'm always looking for more science to do when it doesn't sort of land in my lap but uh, other than that i shall see you in a future video